don't know why I feel super excited. I mean, even though I'm in Brazil, but I'm super excited for this trip. I mean, the journey that I'm about to embark on right now, going to Salvador, the blackest city out of Africa. And listen, I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> I'm more than excited. Like, I'm so excited, man. I can't wait to hug my fellow brothers and sisters allow them to feel the warmth from Africa. I'm, I'm bringing the warmth from Africa directly to them. Bye, my Pepe. Hi, hello, everybody. Maya, your Pepe is expensive. No, no, no. Hi, you buy Pepe? Woo. I'm excited, man. I don't know, I've used the word excited so many times because I'm super excited. Yeah. Just going to get my ticket. And <laughs> two hours later, I'll be in Salvador. two hours flight traveling in Brazil feels like you're traveling within a continent because the country is so huge because for us uh, flying to Salvador is going to take us two hours 15 minutes so yeah preparing for takeoff close your eyes and let's pray <laughs> So that's the Mr. Maya. Mr. Maya. Welcome to Salvador. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi, how are you? Hoy en Cioro cargo también un camaro y ropa de marca que también portamos en PCC. Miren ya lo que logré. La vida es un chingo, ya me tropezé. This place is, uh, we cannot explain. Even myself, there is, I'm a local of course, I miss this place when I keep far for a period, like the energy. When I come back and I come exactly to this place, Pelourinho, I can breathe, I can feel my energy recharging. So, firstly, it's about the energy, the, the vibration from Salvador. Uh, also the colors, the music that you see everywhere, like now you can maybe listen to the song. The beach, the, the culture here is very, very intense. Everywhere you go, you see elements from different uh, aspects like cuisine, dance, capoeira, music. So the arts here is very uh, easy to see and to keep connected. So Salvador for me is unique. I don't want to leave my city never. <laughs> Welcome to the blackest city out of Africa, the African city of Brazil, the city that millions of slaves that were taken out of Africa were brought to, the city that 80% of its population are of African descent. Have you heard of the New World? This was once the New World. Welcome to Salvador Bahia, the first capital of Brazil. so happy to be here and uh, I, I'm just super excited being here. That's like my grandma from Ghana. How, how are you? To the bang? To the bang? To the bang. Oh, like everything, everything is cool. Salvador. 
Salvador, Bahia. A very beautiful coastal city in the northeastern part of Brazil, situated on a peninsula. Salvador Bahia got a lot of nicknames, but my favorite one is the City of Happiness. <laughs> You cannot tell me that with all the beautiful women that you see in this city, you're going to be sad. You cannot tell me that with the rhythm, the sounds, the vibration from this beautiful city will make you a sad person. I'm really having a time of my life in this beautiful city. But after being here, first impression, I feel like Salvador Bahia is a city full of contrast. I think uh, one thing that I would say, first impression after being here for the past five days, this is a city of contrast. Exactly. A city where when you see rich people, you see that the place is super rich with uh, skyscrapers. I mean, people living so big in there. Then when you drive 30 minutes away from it, the rest is uh, fabulous. Yes, you come back to Jamestown. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and also, one of the things that I've seen, it's more like, uh, have you eaten a chocolate cake before? Yes. So a chocolate cake with a vanilla ice cream on it. Yeah, That's... I'm not very fond of sweets, but I think no, I No, but you've seen it, right? Yes. So the chocolate is like, you know, the, the chocolate is bigger. The chocolate cake is bigger. Then you put a vanilla cream cream on it yes. it's in a small size. So you see so many black people, which I'm describing them as a chocolate. And the colors, so it shows the diversity of the city with the, I mean, the white people that you see here that, 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 that these are the size of the cream that you see on top mm -hmm. and i don't know but being here i think the blacks are the majority but the people that are ruling or the people that are doing everything are the white people, white people. so 20 percent ruling 80 percent how is life in general uh living in salvador by here as a black person yeah, it, it should be wonderful that it's the uh, most uh, African city outside the African continent. Yep. Uh, at least uh, between the capitals of, uh, of Brazil and uh, all America. Yeah. But it's, uh, on the other side, it's very difficult because it's one of the most uh, racist uh, city. It's a, a lot of prejudice here in Salvador. We don't have mayors, black mayors, and we, we don't have a, a, a black elite, a middle class. Uh, most of uh, it is white people that, uh, yeah, that compose this middle class. So it's it's a very large struggle to make justice and uh, equalizing the opportunity Trinity. for the whole society. All the society. Yeah. Salvador, the Afro-Brazilian capital with roughly 80% of its residents roots to Africa. Why is this so? 
because this city is the first ever slave market in the new world where Africans were enslaved and brought in here to work on sugarcane plantation. I believe you all want to know when and how that this happened. In the year 1530 to 1856, the Portuguese brought about 4.8 million of enslaved Africans from different ethnicities from different regions of Africa. Yeah, we are in the lower city, in the oldest part of Salvador. And it was exactly here in the colonial period, uh, 7th century, that we had the first most important uh, port in Brazil. And it was by here that we received thousands. About The total in Brazil was about 5 million Africans enslaved people. And here, this place, we received many of these. Africans. So when, when they, they arrive in Brazil by here, northeast of Brazil, especially Recife and Salvador. Was exactly here. And I've seen like a, the floating fort. What is that useful? This fort was also built in the 60th century between 60th and 70th century. It's one of the oldest uh, defensive systems in Brazil. And it was built exactly in front of the city, because Salvador was planted, it was start to be built there, to protect the city of any kind of uh, invasion, attack. Do you understand? So we have the fort there, and more forts to the left, there's Barra, and more to the right, because the city was concentrated to the top. In the top. So Salvador was chosen to be the first capital in Brazil, also because of the strategic position. In the northeast, also having the most important fort, and also because of the position there. Because from there it would be easy to see any kind of attack. I wish we all can close our eyes and say a prayer for our ancestors. After being here, I really feel their pain because they went through a lot of inhumane treatment right from the continent to the middle to the new world. That shows how resilient our people are. And even when they made it in here, they did not just come here to eat and sleep, but the struggles still continued. If you see in a city of this caliber, knowing that it was built by our people with no machinery. It shows that our ancestors really suffered in the new world. So the colonial Salvador that began to be built in 1549 was obviously very small and was located in what is now the Pelourinho neighborhood. Uh, in the 7th century, it was surrounded by a wall of stones and mud to protect it from any type of attack and treat such as the Dutch. So even today, we have a part of this stone wall preservator. So this is the unique part of the wall that we still have preservated here in Salvador. This wall was built in the 7th century wow. to protect the city. The wall is still here? Yeah, the wall Oh my god. See? So basically, this is the foundation of Brazil. Yeah, yeah. because Salvador is the first capital. It was founded in 1549. And Brazil will start to be invaded and in, colonized in 1500. So 49 years after. And this is the map, the map of Salvador, original. So you see the wall here, around. So now we are about here. Here. Yeah. So this was the whole Salvador. Yeah, that now is just the Pelourinho neighborhood. And of course, all this that you see, this wall was built by our sisters, Africans. So it's you also. Know, I, I feel like they made Africans do all the hard work. Of course, all. 
Because to build this, yeah, all, all the hard work, all the city, each rock, each stone that you see here, from that period, uh, 16th century, 17th century, was built by the enslaved, and also indigenous, but majority uh, the slaves. Africans, yeah. It's like you put in like this is like a rock. patrimony. This is the in its original state. Original. From about sixteen thirteen. Just wanna know like who built this place. Pessoas que foram escravizadas e trabalharam duro nesta área para construir essa região que hoje nós conhecemos como centro histórico, né? O Pelourinho. One unique thing about Pelourini, anytime you are here, is the gravel road. And you see the, the roads are made of stones. But apparently the roads that are made out of stones got history. And it's not a good one. Can you tell me what the stones on the ground really represent? It stones here, part mm. of this place, mm. uh, has black, 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 black uh, blood. Black, black? Blood, of course. Because the black people, as a slaver, built in this place. So, the build it part of this place has. The whole place was built by black people? Yes. The black community, well, as a slaver, Building this. The stones, is it in its original form or it has been uh, yeah. renovated? Sim, essas pedras houve na verdade um processo né, de revitalização, porém mantendo a estrutura que foi construída há século passado, né? Na verdade, há séculos, já que o Pelourinho, a história é que pelo menos no século XV foi construída essa área. I kept on hearing the name Pelerino to the extent that I didn't even know the real pronunciation of Pelerino. But the history behind this name even made me more sad. So the name of the neighborhood Pelerino comes from the extruder that calls Pelerino that was used to punish the enslaved in that period. So it's like a big and large piece of wood uh, where normally they was uh, tied there and was used to receive like lashes. Some, most of them also when there was a lot of lashes, they, was, they could die. So this is the origin of the name of the neighborhood Pelourinho. Brazilian street. So Salvador was planted, started to be built in 1549 by Tomé de Souza, Portuguese colonizer that was designated to build all the city. And this was considered the elite area. Okay? Wow. Yeah, push it. It's a busy street, man. Uh, yeah, it's a mixture. Now it's more business. But all this area, call it Pelourinho originally was like the rich area of the city after when the city started to expand to other areas uh, this place starts to be more commercial turn it commercial and many homeless people also start to invade the occup this house that was empty irregularly like not regular uh, so we also had a very strong social crisis here in this neighborhood Pelourinho about uh, in 20th century and this place was built by this place was built by the, the Africans the enslaved people but in order or designated by the the general Tomate Souza that you see that is that tentativa para poder retirar algumas famílias porque alguns prédios são valorizados. valorizados é uma área comercial mas também existem famílias que residem nesta área mas aqui também tem que dizer que esses casarões também pertenciam a famílias ricas no passado então você teve um processo também de substituição né quando o, aqui deixou de ser o, o, o talvez o, 
é, a parte nobre da cidade, essas pessoas ricas mudaram para outros lugares. E aí foi ocupado por pessoas pobres. E quando foi ocupado por pessoas pobres, em dado momento que teve uma reforma daqui do, do Pelourinho, foi que teve uma tentativa de retirada dessas pessoas pobres dos imóveis. This issue, this place, when the slave masters that had the coffee farm and all the all the the, the, the palm plantations where they extracted the palm wine for cosmetics, they were all all those ones that had those houses in Pelorio where they have the the slave masters colony. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. It's kind of like a, in, instead of being a castle. It's like a, a community, yeah. so that's where they have the, 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 the George McLean and all them, them, you understand, in Portuguese level. So, when things started changing, the abolition of the slave and distance, they moved from that Pelorinho, where you guys ate yesterday, yeah. had lunch, to come to this place. So, this is one of the most expensive pieces of land in the whole Bahia. Did you know that some of the enslaved Africans in Brazil returned back to Africa? As of why they returned, I had no idea. But based on my research, some bought their freedom and went back to the motherland. But also many believe that during one of the biggest revolts in the history of Bahia, where they tend to be called the revolt of the Malays, which is Muslims, on January 25th, 1835, over 600 slaves mobilized themselves in search of their freedom. So that caused the biggest revolt in the history of Bahia. And at the end of the day, some were caught, they were flogged, some were also executed, and majority of them were deported back to the continent. Hence the name, the Tabon people of Ghana. So if you've ever heard about Jamestown, yes, Jamestown in Accra. I'm currently at Jamestown, popularly known as British Accra, Jamestown, British Accra. And the house behind me is the house that is called Brazilian House. The reason why uh, this place is called Brazilian House, the Ghanaians that were taken from Ghana to Brazil, they had the descendant come back home in 1836. And when they came, this is the area when they certainly live. So when you look at outside the street, it's called Brazil Lane. So all the houses on the street was built by the Afro-Brazilians who returned from Brazil. And the later they became a businessman. They, be, they saw all the houses and went back to Brazil. But one of them, one of the leaders who led a 200 delegation from Brazil to Ghana, is called Mama Nansu. He married from the local royalty, from Otublohum. And he had the daughter, one daughter with the Queen Mother's daughter. Oh. So he have to leave the property for his descendants, and I'm one of the descendants of the Brazil house. Oh, okay. So yeah. what, what came about with the name Tabon, Tabon people? Oh, okay, when they returned in 1836, you know, they cannot speak the English, they only speak Portuguese. Okay. So, because they are businessmen and uh, they are selling a lot of things, when the local people, the, some of the Ghana people came and buy something, they, they greet them, Tabon, it's good. Tabon means it's good in Portuguese language. Okay. Okay. It's good, it's good. So, the people in the local area refer them as the people who speak Tabon language. So, that's why they call them Tabon people. Today, as I'm talking to you now, the Tabon people, uh, our Tabon community is a very big community in Ghana. For example, the first female chief justice in Ghana was born here. Oh, okay. She's also a Tabon. And uh, not a uh, lot, a lot of people passing through here. As you know, they were all Tabon people. Where we are now, we are at the Jamestown Port. 
the port that was built by King James in 1646. This is a port when the Afro-Brazilians arrived in 1836. It has become a now a local fishing harbor. And so when they returned, they came with a couple of the West African, oh, okay. for example, Togo, Nigeria, yeah. and then the Benin. They are on one ship. Oh, okay. Yeah, so when, when they, they are coming. When they arrived, others also went back to but Togo, when, yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, when the ship left Ghana, it went to Togo, okay. Benin, then in Nigeria. Wow. They are all descendants of the returnees from Brazil. You cannot be in Salvador by here without feeling like you are in Africa, which means that they left Africa, but Africa never left them. I know that Brazilians are super big on beach football, but the fact that the people playing football looks like me, I mean, if we should take this beach to somewhere in Sierra Leone, you would definitely think that these are all Africans. This is crazy, man. So I'm exploring Salvador by here and I just met an Afro-Colombian. Wow! Mario. And uh, Senegalese? Yes, yeah, Senegalese. So as black people found yourself in Salvador by here, how does that feel? I mean, for me, Salvador is like, if you're black and you're going to South America, if you're not going to Cartagena, you need to go to Bahia. Uh, you need to go to Bahia. It's Salvador is, is a must. Why do you say so? It's the heart of Afroculture in the country and to an extent in the South Americans. For me, it's been interesting because like there is so much spirit from South West Africa in here. But also everything is so mixed. And, and different that when you're used to being Banjul or being in Dakar on the street and you almost like see the tribes and you know and you look at people's faces and you like you recognize some element but then everything is just so much blue it's incredible he never told me they were coming to a black city <laughs> indeed Salvador Bahia is the Africa out of Africa because the way of life in this city it's similar to the way of life in different countries in Africa. And me being here, that was really exciting to see. <laughs> Paolo, what happened in here? So we are in the heart of uh, Salvador, the heart of Brazil actually, Pelourinho, right? So the historical city of Salvador, mm. pretty much a UNESCO heritage site. Yeah. Uh, the first settlement of the Portuguese here in Brazil, but also it has a very sad story because the Africans were beaten here. But then nowadays we we made a, another we gave another meaning for this place, which means freedom, means celebration of our culture, means connect our roots with our roots. So Pelourinho is now a very Afrocentric place. Wow. And particularly in this area here, this square is well known worldwide because the Michael Jackson used to play here. Actually, he played a, a, a video clip called They Don't Care About Us. But in this particular place, that's the window there. Oh. Uh, he was there, you see? Wow. Uh, so Michael Michael Jackson was pretty much doing uh, a big favor to Brazil, to Bahia, to promote Olodum, which is our most, most iconic music group, to the world. And then this place here during the 90s became really vibrant. Wow. Uh, and nowadays it's like uh, the heart of, of Brazil. Ooh. See, everyone, I mean, one thing I love about this place is that, like, it's so Afrocentric, you know. Yes, yes. The Afro vibe here is really thick, man. I don't know if you guys can see the people around here. They look like Ghanaians. They look like, uh, you know, West African, like Angolian. So beautiful, man. Yeah. You, you, you've been to Ghana? No, not good. <laughs> you, you from Brazil? Wow! You look, you look like my mom from, from, from Ghana. Look at that. 
You've been to Africa? Never? No, never. Never? Never. Wow. I love your outfit. It, it's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, nice. You Ghana? Yeah, I'm from Ghana. Wow. This is this is crazy. Like I, I saw her, I'm like, that's my my mom, that's my auntie from Ghana. And she's like, no, I'm from Brazil, man. He follows me on YouTube. Yes. Wow. Really? Yes. Yeah. Well, because I love Ghana. Wow. So there's a lot of YouTubers that were doing content in Ghana. Mm. Uh, some folks from the UK, I think, were living there. And then yep. there was a guy with the kids. Exactly. And you. And so I love it. You know, I spent, I spent three months at the Shetsu University. I just see the Shetsu Ghana is close to my heart. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Nice to see you. Good to see you too, man. And uh, I guess you love coming to Salvador. Yeah, I live here now. You live here? What, 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 why, why Salvador? Because I want to be around black folks. I want to be by the ocean, I want to be in a warm climate. And I love it here. So I was in Rio, didn't really like it as much. Um, so I came here. Ooh. Do you feel at home here though? I do feel at home. Cultural differences, you know, they, they're significant, but folks are very nice and welcoming. And we work, we work it out, make it work. But you said you live in Ghana for three months? I was in Ghana for three months. Is there any similarities between Ghana and um, Salvador? Um, just that I feel like I don't stand out. You know, in the streets, I can walk and nobody will know that I'm not from there until I say something. <laughs> the minute I say something, then they know I'm not from there. But, you know, I feel like brotherhood, you know, like a connection that I don't feel a lot of other places. And it's not all about the connection with the people, but the connection with the food. This is, uh, oh wow, it seems, this is Akara, Akaraje. Akaraje da Marijane. Yeah, her name is Mary Jane. Yes, Mary Jane. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> and you make akara jay. Yes. Mary Jane makes akara jay. Yeah. Yeah, akara jay, Mary Jane. Ah, uh, hola, tutu bang. What is this called? This one is called what? It's abara. Abara. Is this? It, it, you know, it looks like. Um, hmm. This is a meal from Ga uh, Nigeria. Yeah. It's called momwain. Momwain. Momwain in Nigeria. Is it made with beans? Yes. Sorry. Made with beans? Uh, fait mm. feijão. Oh. If you ever get a chance to visit Salvador by here and you make it to Pelorini? Pelorini. Please, make sure you buy Akaraje from Mary Jane. Ooh, la, la. <laughs> this is called Gary. Or Yuka, Yuka Fall. In Ghana, we call it Gary. In Nigeria, it's called Gary. Oh, it's not Gary, no. Let me... It's from Yuka? One minute, let me taste. I want to be sure. <laughs> this is a Christian city with Afro-indigenous religion and in here they call it Candomblé. It was exciting to see Nigeria, Togo, Benin and Ghana religion present in here. What I read before coming in here is the most popular African spirituality religion that is found in Salvador by here yeah. is Candomblé. Yes. I really want to know more about Candomblé. What is Candomblé all about? Oh, thanks for the question. My name is Caetano Portugal. Mm. I'm Elgan uh, from this temple. It's a temple of Candomblé. Mm. Candomblé is an African-Brazilian religion, African-inspired religion okay. uh, brought by uh, people from Africa mm. that uh, were brought by Europeans, uh, enslaved, and uh, it, um, it functions with some elements. Mm. Uh, number one, divination. Number two, offerings uh, for the god and goddess that uh, we call um, Vodun. Okay. And uh, we have dance, we have play, play uh, of drums, drums yeah. and uh, we sing and uh, we uh, eat. It's a religion full of joy 
and uh, it's kind of encapsulated African culture in the Brazilian territory. Okay, he's buying all of this. And what is he using it for? Okay. For Ogwen Yeshu, that's the, the gods, the gods. Wow. For the gods. I feel like Brazilians are so big. The Afro Brazilians are so big yeah, yeah. in the African spirituality. Very, very, very. Come closer. Qual é a celebração de Beji? Não. Não. Ah, for protection. For protection. Protection, yeah, sacrifice. O Ogun is from Nigeria. É Ogun é uma palavra nigeriana, né? De Yoruba. Are you Yoruba? Você é Yoruba? Não. Você é da onde? Eu sou do Brasil. He's from Brazil. Que parte? São Paulo. São Paulo, from São Paulo. But you believe, you believe in the African spirituality? Você acredita no religião africano espiritualmente? Sim. O que você está fazendo? I asked her what is she doing? What is that? Okay. She's asking for offerings, like help, donate to support the Twins Fest, Twins Festival, because every September is the Twins in Tafu, uh, Ghana. We call it in Tafu. Here is the, wow. the in Nigeria. We call it Beijis. They have they have Twin Festival here. Exactly. We, I, have, we have Twin Festival in Accra, in Ghana. In, in Ghana, Africa, também ten celebration de Beijis. It's uh, the the Homoho Festival. Oh, so Homoho is Twins. Festival. Yeah, so Homoho, the day for Homoho, it's like a day or two days or a week before Homoho, they celebrate Twin Festival. In And do people wear white for white, the festival? Say, so that is what she's asking for support to do the the Twins Festival. That is the, we call it Beji. That is a Yoruba word. Yeah, Beji. Twins mother, Atta, Mami Atta. There are all those kind of names. No, so it makes sense, right? This is interesting. Yes. When, they have some, when is the festival? This festival is the whole September. The whole of September. Yes. And I cannot come to a coastal city without checking out the beach and finding out that the local beach in here is called Sao Tome. Just like a country in Africa. It was the happiest day of my life because it's time to eat food. of a Jamaican man. Hey, I love it. I love it. Yeah. The people are happy. They are amazing. And they look like me. Immersing myself in the Atlantic Ocean at the other side of the world. This is Sao Tome. I mean, I'm not talking about a Sao Tome in Africa. I'm talking about Sao Tome in Brazil. This whole area is called Sao Tome Principe. It's found along the coastline in Salvador, the blackest city out of Africa. I mean, the African city within Brazil. Like literally everyone around me is black. Everyone around me looks like me. Everyone looks around me looks is black. <laughs> Everyone around me looks, looks like black. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> 